Michigan. <laughs> It's your least favorite K-pop YouTuber here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel So today for you guys, I'm going to be giving you some more of my unpopular K-pop opinions Since we know how well it went the last time As you can see by the title, these opinions are supposed to be unpopular. You aren't supposed to agree with them. I hate it when people watch unpopular opinions videos and then get mad at the opinions for being unpopular. You do realize that like you like you you signed up for this. You clicked on the video. You signed up for this. So suck it up, Buttercup. If you're gonna get your panties all in a bunch, then leave. Because if you're gonna type some fuck-ass comment in my comment section, I will say some shit and I will hurt your feelings. Just a warning. Anyways, without further bullshit, let's get into this video. Opinion 1, SNSD is very much mid. SNSD didn't have a good title track until Run Devil Run. Don't come at me with that, like, into the new world and G and O. Don't come at me with that bullshit. All of that is horrible. This is a mini unpopular opinion, but Into the New World probably has to be the most overrated K-pop song I have ever seen. Seriously, that shit is so boring. I don't see how you people listen to it. And they don't have a single good B-side. Their discography is just the embodiment of the term mid. Sure, they have some standout tracks like Run Devil Run, The Boys, and I Got a Boy that change K-pop for the better and I bop to them all the time. But they also have tracks like G. Oh, and catch me if you can, that make me question, like, what the hell the producer was thinking and if they thought that was good. I don't think they did, personally. I think they were just trying to do SNSD dirty, because li literally, how do you listen to O or G or catch me if you can and say, yeah, like... We should release that. How do you as a producer make that decision? Like, that's my question. Just, just asking. Also, the majority of their discography is filler. Like, if I had to take a guess, maybe like 98%. None of their B-sides help to create a cohesive album and just exist purely to fill space. Personally, I think SNSD probably would have been way better off if they like only released single albums and like maybe four to five track mini albums once in a blue moon. And yes, their Japanese discography is better than their Korean discography, but we're talking about them in the lens of K-pop and their Japanese releases are J-pop, so... I'm not going to, yeah, like, their Japanese discography is fine, but their Korean discography is wholly overrated. Opinion 2. Blackpink might re-sign with YG. Okay, look, before he blinks, before you go sounding off in the comments, here's my point of view. Blackpink barely gets comebacks and spends most of their time modeling and just, like, enjoying their lives. Whereas other groups are essentially just, like, slaves to their companies and spend all their time working. Blinks love to act as though Blackpink hates the hiatus as, as much as we do, but I don't really know about that, bro. I don't know. For all we know, Blackpink might just be loving the lack of comebacks because they get to do less work and enjoy living their lives more. And you know, good for them. I'm not saying this is the case, but it is definitely a possibility. And considering the crazy amount of success and money that they've gained under YG, the fact that Blackpink gets treated pretty good when you compare them to their peers, and they consistently get good songs when they do have comebacks, I think that there is a good chance that they might resign. Opinion three. Espa did the beat switch better than SNSD. Hey, look, I got a boy. Look, even though I just got through trashing SNSD, I got a boy is one of my favorite songs ever. But I do have to admit that the beat switch just works way better in Next Level. It just feels more smooth and the two instrumentals kind of work better together. 
if you know what I mean. Opinion four, SM needs to take a marketing class. SM probably has to be the worst entertainment company on the planet in terms of marketing. They could have easily been where Hybe is now if they had just made better decisions. They have all of these talented idols under the company, yet they waste the idol's talent by not marketing them properly. If you want an example, like, Super M was created for the sole purpose of being promoted in America. But let's be real, what American promotions did SM do for Super M? Not shit. Not, like, they did not, they didn't do shit. They, like, versus BTS, Blackpink, Twice, who are, like, K-pop group. Yet, they get way better Western promotions, and they're mega popular. And, like, Super M, they just flopped, honestly. You can't just release bomb-ass music and expect people to listen. Sure, that'll happen to a certain extent due to SM's reputation in the industry, but you still have to market them properly if you want to bring in new fans or promote them overseas. Their group's albums are seldom in print, and they consistently underprint Red Velvet albums and take months to do reprints if they decide to do a reprint. FX's albums have been out of print for years, going on years. Yet, there is, there's never been any reprints. The prices for their albums on eBay are sky high, and SM doesn't really do anything. The SMCU concept that they have is just confusing as fuck, and is extremely unnecessary. Girl, not everyone wants a Luna moment, so can you, like, not? They have no clue how to handle scandals, especially if it's their female idols. Y'all remember the Wendy and Giselle situations? Yeah. Those could have been easily avoided if SM did their fucking job as a company. Speaking of Giselle, they basically used her scandal as a marketing stunt, which basically caused her reputation as an idol and Espas as a group to be fucked with international fans. Yeah, love that for you, SM. They are so obsessed with everything being perfect that they don't even let their idols sing live on music shows or at concerts, which negatively affects the group's reputation because live vocals and stage presence are a must if you're a singer. Case in point, Espa. I have never seen a group get more disrespect for their stage presence. SM is just overall a massive shit show, and I'm just trying to fast forward to the series finale because it just gets so old seeing the same fuck-ups happen over and over and over again because these executives up at SM refuse to learn their fucking lessons. Opinion 5. Y'all use Yuna's supposed over-sexualization as an excuse to bash JYP. None of y'all hoes who were barking about how Yuna is over-sexualized actually cared about her. You just wanted an excuse to bitch at JYP for the 456th time this year. Yes, JYP has over-sexualized multiple underage idols before, but I don't think Yuna is one of them. Y'all were really saying that a 16-year-old girl wearing a crop top and short shorts was over-sexualization when in reality, that's just a normal outfit. Honey, that is normal for a 14-year-old to wear. So, like, I, where do you, I'm not even gonna ask questions, because no matter how you slice that fucking pie, it's not gonna, like, I'm just thinking about that, and I'm just bewildered that that was a thing that people really believed in the year of our Lord 2019, but damn. I seriously have no clue what y'all expect from her. Should every underage idol be forced to cover every inch of skin on their body because perverts online will sexualize them? If you answered yes to that question, you are truly a retarded individual, and I am politely asking you to toot toot your ass off my channel. Thank you. You know wears clothes that were and are appropriate for a girl her age to wear, and she doesn't seem uncomfortable at all in those outfits. Matter of fact, she picked out a lot of the outfits that y'all claimed were 
over sexualization. Just because someone is a minor doesn't mean that they're a toddler and you and need to be a totally innocent baby who doesn't show any skin and has no clue what sex is. Let teenagers be teenagers for fuck's sake. Opinion six, YG makes the best B-sides. YG is the only company where most, if not all of the B-sides that they make feel like they could easily be title tracks. Listen to 21's Crush album and you'll see what I mean. Truly incredible, by the way. If you haven't listened to Crush album yet in the year of our Lord 2022, what are you doing, honey? Opinion seven, Chuck and Let It were mid. Okay, listen to me. First of all, before we even get into this, I need y'all to understand something. When I say mid in this context, I mean mid is as in as mid as a CL song could be. Obviously, we know that CL is physically incapable of making a bad song. It is just the truth. No song that she has ever been on has been a bad song. And that's just because CL is just the queen. Okay? And because... All of her songs are so good. The standard is just so high that what I consider to be mid for her would honestly be like the best song in a group's discography It was if it was released by someone else. Just putting that out there. I personally think that Sirens and Jai are way better and deserve way more attention. Sirens should have had a music video. Yes, Let It is a good song, and it has that novelty factor because it was originally a 21 demo, but musically speaking, Sirens is way better, and an MV for it probably would have been the best from Alpha Era, a thousand percent. Like, I'm picturing, like, her in, like, a red and black, like, box set, and then, like, shots of her crying at the beach. Like, it would have been legendary, but... It didn't happen, unfortunately. Opinion eight, JYP fell off. JYP has been losing so much of its star power in recent years that it's honestly shocking. This really, this whole decline really just started in 2020. Wannabe and More and More were some of the most poorly received songs from their respective groups. Although we did have God's Menu to hold us off until Not Shine, I Can't Stop Me got released later in the year. Overall, 2020 wasn't a total shit show, but it did signal a decline. Starting off in 2021, shit really hit the fan with GOT7 leaving the company, Itzy's Mafia in the Morning getting trashed on by all of KTube, and things would only get more pear-shaped as the year went on because, lord. Stray Kids released Thunderous and Twice released Scientists, and both of them flopped on the charts. Obviously, they didn't like that they managed to chart, which is good, but considering the high level of success that those groups were used to, they were flops. Like, those comebacks flopped bad. But it was really the debuts of Extinary Heroes and Enmix that really cemented it in for me. Extinary Heroes and Enmix are whole ass big three groups, but they were flopping worse than the Nugus on the chart. I repeat, Big three groups were being outcharted by whole ass Nugus in the year of our Lord 2022. Honestly, I'm just not, you know, nothing surprises me anymore. And Mix or Twice or Stray Kids could honestly just have a comeback of them, just like farting into a microphone for 30 minutes, and I would not be surprised because this year is just a, a whole load of fuckery. From 2015 to 2019, JYP kind of had an unprecedented good luck streak in the industry, whereas YG and SM kind of flopped. Twice became K-pop's top group and brought in tens of millions of dollars and hundreds of millions of streams. JYP surpassed YG as K-pop's top company. But then starting in 2020, this good luck streak started to fade. And now I think it's totally gone. Because if you are a big three group and your groups are being outcharted by Nugus, you need you like you need to cancel everything you have planned for the next two months and go to a marketing seminar. Not just you you need to go to like you just need to reevaluate your life. Because how does that happen? Like I don't think that this necessarily spells out the end for JYP as they are richer than God, basically. But they definitely need to start doing something different and for fuck's sake, get a new marketing team. Opinion 9. Nugu companies treat their artists way worse than the big three do. When the topic of the big three is brought up, people always bring up how the idols are treated. Yes, the big three do have a ton of skeletons in their closet. 
YG Sabotage 21, JYP Oversexualized, Miss A, Hyuna, and Twice. SM treated all of their groups ever like literal money printers. I could go on, but most of the really terrible mistreatment, like just the, like, I feel, I feel horrible for these people. Like I want to just like show up and give them the biggest hug ever comes from Nugu companies. Like, idols being assaulted by staff and like having to live in places that homeless people would steer clear of honestly. The reason for that is simply because big three idols and trainees are pampered. Y'all don't want to believe this, but they are pampered. Most of them come from rich families who have the money to pay the company to train and debut them. And obviously they will get treated better because they are under a bigger company with more resources. And if it comes out that, like, a staff member at SM assaulted an idol, God knows. Like, they, SM, like, honestly, knowing Reveloves, they might just try to burn the SM building down. These Nugu companies can basically get away with so much more because they are Nugu. Most K-pop fans don't even really know companies outside of the big three, Hybe and Cube. And because these companies are Nugu, they can treat their idols like total dog shit and basically get away with it because nobody knows who they are. Look at how TS has literally treated all of their groups. The CEO of DS and A Entertainment literally sexually assaulted members of a boy group that was under the company at the time in the middle of a public restaurant and got away with it for months until the members sued the company. Calling big three idols who are basically pampered horribly mistreated when idols are getting like sexually assaulted by their CEOs and being forced to live in places that homeless people wouldn't consider living is just honestly shocking. Opinion 10, Nmix will become the fourth generation FX. When FX was active, they were kind of known for being underrated and not being as successful as their label mates. And honestly, this is what I believe Nmix will become like I said earlier, Nmix is a whole ass big three group that was being outcharted by new goos. Honestly, like, they'll probably gain a reputation for being underappreciated and underrated, but also, like, having a very dedicated group of people that hate them. I, I like, I can see that happening for them. I think it's in the card for the freaky fishy girls. I'm calling it, boys. Opinion 11, you can't hold K-pop idols accountable for their actions. This isn't really an opinion, this is just more of a hard to swallow pill that I needed to put in a video but couldn't find one to put it in, so I slapped it here. The whole, like, hold idols accountable thing that international fans like to shit out their assholes 24-7, it's an illusion. You can scream on Twitter all you want, but you're not holding anyone accountable. And Mamamoo is a prime example of this. Whenever the blackface scandal happened, international fans were trashing them left and right. People were screaming, hold them accountable, hold them accountable on Twitter 24 seven. But then nothing really happened to them that was all that bad. Their album that came out a month after the scandal sold significantly more than the one before the scandal. So obviously the whole hold Mamamoo accountable movement failed miserably and it just turned into a bunch of haters yelling at a wall. The reason why international fans can't hold K-pop idols accountable is because they simply don't give two single fucks about what you think. And you're not liking them isn't going to stop any of their bags. Because like Mamamoo, most other K-pop groups rely heavy on their domestic popularity rather than their international popularity. Simply put, they don't give a fuck about you because you aren't the ones lining their pockets. The Korean fans are. That's why a group can do blackface, cultural appropriation, say slurs, and nothing will really happen. But if they do some petty shit like stand up for women's rights or allegedly bully someone in high school, then they're canceled and they deserve to get the guillotine. Because the people who are putting money into the company's pockets are Korean and they don't care about things like racism or homophobia or misogyny. And I'll see people online who see these scandals and just go off on a massive Twitter tirade 
And I'm just thinking, bro, like y'all do realize that you are just yelling at a wall. Honestly, yelling at a wall would probably be more effective than what these like fans on Twitter are doing. You people really think that just because you are a fan of the group and you love them and you stream their music and like you you send your hearts and your little like, I don't fucking know, that these companies give a single fuck about you. I'm here to tell you they don't. They don't care about you at all. They don't care if you feel hurt or offended or disrespected. And going on a Twitter tirade is only going to bring more attention to the group and make them even more popular. If you are truly hurt by the actions of a group or idol, you need to put your keyboard down and make your anger pricey. Case in point, I used to be a casual Block B fan until I saw Zico's racist and homophobic past, and I quietly unstand the group. No Twitter rant, no fan wars. I just unfollowed them and removed their songs from my iTunes library and went about my day. It's literally that easy. If you take anything away from this video, I want you to take away that you need to make your anger pricey. If you're the type of people who do this stuff, you do realize that all you're doing by starting a fan war and acting like a piss baby on Twitter all it's doing is making you look like a fool. Opinion 12, Cubed in Sabotage CLC. Since 2018, Cheshires have spread this narrative that Cube sabotage CLC for funsies. And if you know even the basics of business, you can tell that that narrative is just totally logically invalid. Cube is a company that has a profit margin that they have to meet per comeback. And because they are a bigger company with a bigger budget and therefore they have a higher profit margin, they need to meet. And once you look at it through that lens, you start to realize why CLC got benched. Their highest selling album sold a combined amount of 13,000 total sales. Compare that to G-Idle whose lowest selling album sold a combined amount of 51,000. People complained about Cube's favoritism towards G-Idle, but don't realize that it wasn't exactly unwarranted. G-Idle simply sell better, so obviously Cube, as a company who is looking to fulfill a profit margin, are going to put all their time, money, and care into the group that is going to bring them the most capital. That's simply Business 101. Simply put, CLC were a flop group. None of their songs have over a million views on YouTube, and most of their albums sold under 10,000 copies. That's Nugu numbers. What y'all failed to realize is that CLC didn't really have a truly dedicated fan base like other groups. 99% of the Cheshire fandom is just casual listeners of the group who weren't gonna buy copies of the album or stream it like a real stans would or do other things that fandoms do to financially support a group outside of, you know, listening to the songs on Spotify. And when you are a company who is looking to make a profit off of your investment, that's not what you wanna see. As much as I love CLC and their music, by the time Freesome came out, their fate was sealed. Sure, Cube could have done so much more for them in the early years to set them up for better success, like give them a more experimental concept so that they stood out more, reprint their albums more often, or just do more promotional activities. But at the end of the day, there just simply, unfortunately, just wasn't really a demand for CLC. Yes, that sucks, but that's how the K-pop industry works. CLC couldn't get a solid fan base with either concept for some reason, and yes, Cube fumbled the bag several times, but they didn't outright sabotage them. All right, bitches, this was the video. If you enjoyed, make sure that you comment, like, subscribe, and turn post notifications on so that you will know whenever I upload next. All of my social media profiles will be linked down below in the description box as well as on the about section of my channel for your convenience. I have an Instagram where I go live because YouTube fucking banned me for no reason a Twitter where I fight with Sones and Blinks on a daily basis, and a second channel where I do more personal content. So go check that out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe, healthy, and stand 21 for clear skin, and I will see y'all later. Bye, bitches.